So we're currently driving to the beach, a lovely beach in Wales, because I've decided to share with you three of my favorite recipes where I create a vegan fish alternative. On the menu, we have scallops, fish cakes, and tuna. We're gonna be making the tuna from watermelon, searing it like a tuna steak, it's mind blowing. We're gonna be making the scallops using king oyster mushrooms, and I'm gonna be serving that with a lovely risotto. And also our fish cakes we're making out of jackfruit. These are unbelievable. Stay tuned for the recipes. Let's get to the beach. That way. Hello, boys. All right, Oliver. Hello. <laughs> I think this, the ocean's going to drown your screams out today, and the audience will be very pleased to know that. As long as it'll drown my pain. <laughs> so welcome to the cliffs of Wales. It's very, very beautiful. The sun is just coming out and you may have been brought to this recipe video after watching Sea Spiracy on Netflix. It's definitely an eye-opening documentary into, you know, the whole fishing industry. You may have quit fish after watching it. So I'm hoping these recipes help you. They certainly helped me after being uh, non-vegan for 20 plus years and enjoyed eating fish and these recipes emulate the taste and the textures of fish cakes, scallops and tuna believe it or not. So the first one we're going to get into is the fish cakes, a nostalgic dish that I used to have when I wasn't vegan, crispy coating, mashed potato with chunks of jackfruit running through it and we're going to flavour it with a taste of the sea flavour using some seaweed, nori, the same stuff that's wrapped sushi. So. Let's get straight into it. Cooking outside is always fun. <laughs> so let's see how we get on. So here's my tin of jackfruit. I got mine from the Vegan Kind supermarket, but as I said, you can get it from all good supermarkets. Just drain away the liquid and then place the jackfruit into a clean kitchen towel or some cheesecloth or something like that. And basically squeeze out the water, wring it out. It's essential that you squeeze as much water out as possible. That will make sure your jackfruit is meaty or has a fish-like texture. So jackfruit, if you're new to the sort of vegan recipes and the recipe world, I'd never heard of it prior to going vegan and I cooked in professional kitchens for years. But it's a fruit, a massive fruit, that's grown in tropical climates. It's often been used as uh, replacements of things like pulled pork and meat because it's got this very flaky texture to it. But on its own, it's absolutely beautiful anyway. So I'm just breaking it up into small pieces and any big seeds that I see, I just take out because even though you can eat them, they're fine. It just doesn't look like fish in the fish cake. So next up into the bowl, I'm gonna add the zest and juice of a lemon, some chopped chives, some blitz up nori, and a spoonful of miso paste for that umami punch. Oh, fuck. Just try and get as much in as possible. The wind's coming from every direction, it seems. And miso paste. Finally, just a pinch of salt, sea salt of course. The miso is quite salty, so just bear in mind how much you're adding. Give this a good mix up, and you wanna make sure you've got enough nori particles in there, coating all of the jackfruit, because that is our key of making this taste fishy. This will fool people, I promise you. Now I'm gonna add enough mashed potato to bring this together, bind it up basically. I've just pre-made this mashed potato, steamed the potatoes and mashed them, simple as that. Trying to film a video, guys. Oliver, if you could be a fish, what fish would you be? I'd be a seahorse. Your headphones are. I'd be a seahorse because they can mate with themselves and then I wouldn't have to be alone anymore. <laughs> <sighs> so sorry, guys, about that. Um, anyway, here's our mix. Just want to add enough potato to help it bind together lightly flour your hands and form it into some rough fish cake patties now i'm outside these aren't going to be the most neat patties i've ever done but uh we'll see what we can do so 
So the next thing we need to do is make a little batter with some flour, some water and a touch of oil. Make it a pancake style batter consistency. We're then going to dip our fish cakes into some plain flour, then into that batter and then into some breadcrumbs, just so they have a nice coating. So you can double, triple, quadruple this recipe if you want, and it can also be made a day in advance, or even put in the freezer, uh, covered, and you can have fish cakes at your disposal for about three months. But I'm gonna cook mine now, so I'm gonna get my non-stick pan placed over medium heat with a touch of olive oil, and when it's hot, I'll get my fish cakes in and cooking until they're lovely and crisp and golden. Yes, nice bit of golden colour there. So guys, when making do outside, the wind is blowing a gale. I'm using my precious cookbook as a uh, wind guard. This is actually a signed copy, and you can get a signed copy from clicking the link below my video. That was a shameless plug. Anyway, I'm going to get these as golden as possible in this outdoor situation. But what you can do is cook them two to three, or three to four minutes on each side, and then put them on a baking tray and into the oven to finish off. I'm just going to do all mine on top of the stove. Um, you just have to bear with me. It's taking some time outside. It's all good though. Got some nice colour and some nice crispness already. So, we got there in the end. Cooking these outside when the wind's blowing has been quite difficult. Definitely cook them three to four minutes in your pan and then into the oven to finish off for 15, 20 minutes. Four written recipes on my website and you can serve them with anything. I recommend some greens or a salad. I'm gonna serve mine with some pickled cucumber and radish plus some turmeric mayo. I am hungry and you can smell, taste of the sea, a little bit of a fishy scent in the air from these just like you would if you were making fish cake. All I've got to eat this with is a giant spoon, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna have a giant mouthful. We still got some nice crispness. And Ollie, my cameraman, said earlier that there is definitely a taste of the sea flavor from these. So here we go. Mm. Oh, did you hear that crunch? This is amazing. Mm. And come and have a look at this. You can see the flakiness. It just looks like a piece of fish inside. So let's get into the next recipe. The next one is the scallops and it's actually very simple too. So for the scallops, we are using king oyster mushrooms. These are also now found at Orchid supermarkets, but if they're not in your local supermarket, go to any Asian supermarket, you'll find king oyster mushrooms, also known as trumpet mushrooms. These are unbelievable. So what you need to do first is prepare a broth. This broth is going to infuse the mushrooms with that taste of the sea flavor because we're going to be adding some of that seaweed, the nori, this time in sheet form. So into my saucepan, I have some vegetable stock just boiling. I'm going to add my white wine, lemon, nori, shallots and thyme. And only use vegan white wine that you would drink because if you won't drink it, then why cook with it? You need to have the same level of satisfaction with your cooking wine as your drinking wine. I haven't got a glass, so don't do this at home. Bellissimo. Oh. <laughs> and look, the sun is out. The water's just glistening. It's beautiful. Oh wow, that fragrant broth now is just gonna absorb into the mushrooms. So I'm using the king oyster mushrooms. I'm gonna just use the stalks and I'm gonna cut them into inch size pieces because they're gonna shrink down in this broth. 
So when your broth has been simmering for a couple of minutes, we wanna get our mushrooms in, and we're gonna poach these for about 10 minutes. And in that time, as I said, they're gonna infuse with this lovely aromatic taste of the sea broth. And this recipe is actually from my Christmas book, which is also being used as a windshield. But uh, if you want Christmas or festive or party food recipes, check this one out. But today I'm gonna to serve these with just a simple risotto, and I'll put the full written recipe for that on my website too. The scallops are done. They've got this lovely sort of spring to them and this amazing texture now and it's exactly like scallops. So I'm gonna get them out of this broth. You can set these aside until you're ready to serve really. All that needs to be done with them is just we've got to pan sear them in a really hot sizzling pan. Yes, we're cooking now guys. Now these mushrooms take a little bit longer than actual scallops but I'm still following the same technique as I would cook scallops. Scallops notoriously take like a really quick time to cook. So what you do, you place them in a clockwise pattern around your pan, starting at the top. 12 o'clock is the first one in. So that means 12 o'clock is the first one that I flip over. Whilst it's cooking, I sprinkle over salt and a squeeze of lemon juice. Look at this, we're cooking on gas. Woohoo! Now I'm having some fun. Let's flip over the first one. Yes, look at that colour. That's what you want. Beautiful. And how much does that look like a scallop? If you have some vegan butter, you can throw that into some herbs, some thyme. And in my Christmas book, there's a recipe for where I make these scallops exactly like I've just done, but I turn that broth into a taste of the sea foam. That's when you really want to impress someone and get quite chefy. So I've got some lovely color on these scallops. I'm gonna serve up my risotto and top it with as many of these as I can fit on. Look at that. A little bit of black pepper would be lovely, but I unfortunately left my pepper grinder at home. I've just, I've got some dill oil though. I don't have black pepper, but I made some dill oil. <laughs> just drizzle that around. All right, Ol. Oliver's gonna try it. You haven't got your, <laughs> it doesn't work, Ol. Oh, sorry. And you don't have to speak loud because it's unplugged. Okay. All right, try a scallop. Sorry, I've got the biggest spoon in the and world. And risotto or just a scallop? I reckon try a scallop on its own first. Yeah? Yeah. Texture. That's a vegan scallop. I mean, look at that. Look at that texture. Oh, they're so good, man. Aren't they good? Very good. Flipping egg. Tom. I think Tom should come in. Yeah, grab Tom. Thank you. Try that juicy one there. That's a big one. Yeah. Big boy. Bite in half, I would. And then just so you can see Bite the texture. Half. Yeah, so you see the texture. Mmm. Oh, wow. It's gorgeous, mate. Yeah. Oh. It's really... I think this, this meal here, right here, it doesn't take that long to prepare. This is a perfect date night meal. In it all, you would cook this for your loved one, right? If I had one. Ah, <laughs> oh, sorry. Anyway, so that's the scallop dish. The next one is the biggest one, the best one, watermelon tuna. That's right, we're gonna make some tuna, seared tuna fillets from watermelon. Before I get into it, please subscribe to the YouTube channel to keep us growing. Thank you. Subscribe. So for the final recipe, the seared watermelon tuna steaks, this one is actually mind blowing. Just like the scallops, this one is just a game changer. The recipe I actually put in my newest cookbook, Plants Only Kitchen, but along with the other two recipes I've cooked today, I'll also put this tuna watermelon steak on my website as well. So you can print it off, you can follow along with it and you can enjoy the dish yourself. I prepared most of this at home because you need an oven. So all I did was peel my medium sized watermelon and cut it into about one inch thick steaks, approximately two and a half inch by one and a half inch fillets basically. Place them onto a baking tray seasoned with salt and roasted them at 180 degrees Celsius for about an hour. 
And whilst they were in the oven, I actually made a lovely marinade with some tahini, soy sauce, rice vinegar, lime, dried chili flakes, garlic, some gochujang, Korean chili paste, but you can also use sriracha, some fresh ginger, spring onions, and a little sesame oil. I blitzed that up, and once the watermelon has baked, I then poured over the lovely marinade and let the watermelon marinate overnight or for at least two hours before you want to serve it. So that brings us back to the present day. Here is the lovely marinated watermelon tuna steaks and look at the texture now after an overnight of marinating. That is squidgy to the touch but it's still got a bit of a bite to it. I know it sounds crazy. Honestly, making watermelon tuna, it, it sounds nuts, all right? Some people do some weird things in the vegan community when they're trying to... I saw something the other day making steak from a radish. That to me just doesn't make sense because the texture just won't be like a steak. But this texture is exactly like watermelon fillets once you've seared them. I've been a chef since I was 15 years old. I don't just do stuff to look the part. This looks and tastes the part. Anyway. That's the rant over. We're gonna get these cooking. I'm gonna get my cast iron pan placed over a medium heat with a little bit of oil, and we're gonna pan sear them. And whilst I'm searing them, I'm just gonna quickly make a noodle stir fry using some of that lovely marinade as a little dressing. We'll throw some veg in there and we'll just serve these watermelon tuna fillets on top. Yes, that is the sizzle you wanna hear when you get this watermelon tuna in the pan. Oh, it smells so good instantly. So what you want is just a light charring on top of these steaks or these fillets, because that is just a bit of caramelization. Um, it just adds a lovely different dimension of flavor. Look at that, oh my God. <laughs> oh God, cook outside they said. sharp knife and slice them on an angle. Wait till you see this. Just melts. Oh my God. And look at that. Look at the texture there. Look at that texture. Look at that. Thank you. Look at that texture. So there is the tuna steak made from watermelon. I'm gonna sit and enjoy this. Looking over the view with my crew. Oh, what a life. Maybe with some wine as well. So let's taste this. Look at that. Oh. <sighs> that is melt in the mouth. Beautifulness. It's got the subtle sweetness of the watermelon. It's got this intense aromatic heat coming through it from the marinade. It is absolutely phenomenal. I've got to share this with my crew uh, because we've had a wonderful day at the Welsh seaside. I hope these recipes have given you inspiration. Uh, I hope they're going to help you if you're deciding to give up eating fish. Don't forget I've got loads more fish recipes on my website and my YouTube, including things like fish and chips, tuna mayo, uh, we've got all sorts. We're going to do chili squid soon, calamari, we've got all that to come. 
But uh, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Signed copies of the cookbooks are on my website. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Come and taste this. You did an amazing job today, all in the harsh conditions. Should we all have a taste? Yes. yes. All right, I'm sorry you have to use your hands. Watermelon steak, tuna steak. Yeah. Mm. What do you think? Delicious. It is really delicious, good. isn't it? I just can't believe you can get a texture from a watermelon. Yeah. It's just a beautiful tasting thing, isn't it?